Okay, in today's video, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up an assembly file here in Inventor, and we're going to grab all the parts and pieces necessary to assemble the bone crusher. So we're going to go up here to place and get my components. I'm going to grab place again, and I'm going to go ahead and select all of the parts and pieces that I want. So I'm going to go into my mechanical drafting file. I'm going to go into this group's folder, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the first part, which is this uh, part one shaft coming all the way down to part 13. Holding down the shift command, I can then select all of them at the same time, hit open, and then these should start showing up here in my inventor assembly area. Clicking once, I now should have a full set of parts and pieces, hit escape. Now what I can do is start the process of assembling. So what I'm going to do first is I need to start looking at the origins, because I want to start with the bottom piece of the assembly, which is going to be this particular uh, uh, bottom plate of the rack. This part is actually called base. So what I need to do is I need to set up the origin planes first. Okay, to get the uh, origin planes to show up, basically come over here to the assembly, click on the arrow next to the word origin, and then I'm going to slide down. What I need to do is I want to start taking a look at the planes, moving out so I can see the planes. I want to actually have the uh, two planes show up that I'm going to work with. First, I'm going to try this uh, XZ plane. So I'm going to right click on the plane and then hit visibility. The reason why I'm turning these on is so I can then utilize these to constrain parts and pieces. Second plane I'm going to grab is going to be the XY. I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility on for that plane as well. So I'm now going to start constraining. I'm going to take the base and I want to constrain the bottom of the base to one of the planes and then uh, can continue to move forward. So I'm going to grab my constraint tool from the top ribbon bar and I'm going to grab the simple make constraint and I'm going to grab this make constraint again. I'm going to make sure I can turn and I'm going to grab the bottom of this particular feature. So I'm going to grab this part here at the bottom and then I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to select the bottom of the XZ plane. What that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and set up the base to be constrained to the bottom of the uh, plane here. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and I'm going to do the same exact thing again and I'm going to then constrain the back of this part. Whoops. Let me go ahead and constrain the back of this part, hopefully. Cancel and get back out of here. Inadvertently was clicking on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the back of this part so that the back face is going to then be constrained to the work plane on this vertical plane here. So I'm going to select that, and you can see those linking up. Go ahead now and just hit apply, and I can now go in and start turning off these work planes because I don't necessarily need them anymore. And I can also slide this closer over here to my parts. As your parts start to get spread out in your assembly, it becomes a little more difficult to manage uh, rotation and movement. So I'm going to come over here, select my planes again, turn this visibility off, just so it's a little easier to see the parts and pieces. Knowing that this is going to be fixed on the planes, I can now continue to move forward. I'm actually going to go ahead and ground this piece also. So I'm going to right click on this and come up to the word grounded. With this being grounded, it gives me a nice solid base to build off of. So it's always nice to keep things from spinning and moving around. So the next part that I'm going to work with here is going to be the shaft. So I'm going to grab my constraint tool. I'm going to go ahead and grab a simple make constraint again. And I'm going to want to constrain the back portion of the shaft, spinning this around a little bit, to the back portion of the base. By doing that, I can see that this relationship is upside down, but that is fine for now. I'm going to apply. And now what I'm going to do is start to orient this properly. I'm going to grab the bottom of this particular feature. And I'm going to turn so I can then grab the bottom of the base. And with the parts being spread out, you can see it's a little more difficult to maneuver. Uh, since I grabbed the bottom of the base, this is going to be a flush constraint. So I'm going to then select the flush constraint here. And you can see that it flips around so it is now oriented properly. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And now I need to now just start the positioning process on this particular feature so that I can see where this is going to be positioned on the part. So if I actually cancel out, you're going to see that I can move this back and forth, but I cannot move this away because of the mates that have been placed. So I'm now going to set this up so that I can set up a uh, flush constraint for the face of the part to the face of the part. And now I'm going to then do an offset constraint here. So I'm going to offset that flush constraint so that this is pushed over to the center. And I believe that that offset distance is going to be 3.25, and that's offsetting from this flush area to push this over. That can always be edited uh, later at any point in time in the assembly. 
I do believe that's probably the uh, number necessary. After rotating this to the top view, looking at this part, I can see that I don't think that that is uh, correct. So reassessing the uh, math here, it's going to be 3.5, and that should be able to push this over here towards the center. So I'm going to hit apply, hit cancel, and now I can start continuing to build up off of my base and my part here. And I need to just basically set up some orientation stuff. So I'm looking at this thing the way that I want to build. So the next parts and pieces I'm going to start with uh, are going to be the next piece in the assembly, which is going to be this bone plate. And I'm going to then go ahead and grab my constraint tool. I'm going to grab a simple insert constraint. And I'm going to then utilize the uh, insert constraint, which is going to be the flush top portion of the part. And then I'm going to find the flush top portion of the particular uh, shaft here. And I'm going to set this up so I have a flush mate constraint. And then I'm going to take this and move this down. So I'm going to move this down to be seven uh, inches down from the top portion. You can see that I'm offsetting this down. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. With the uh, application of that insert constraint, we're just going to hit cancel. And I'm going to show that this can be turned and moved, but it cannot go up and down on that shaft. It can just be turned and spun. So we need to now constrain this particular movement so it won't move around on us. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab the constraint tool again. I'm going to slide down. I'm going to grab the angle constraint this time. And I want to have what is called a directional angle. It's a very simple angle constraint. And I'm going to go ahead and select the face of the uh, bone plate and then the face of the base. Setting this up to be a zero degree angle, then it's going to keep these two things parallel to each other. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I'll cancel out of that again, and then you can see now as I try to move it, it will not move, and it will not go up and down. So this has now been fixed in position. Now we're ready to move on to the next part that is going to be working through this assembly, and that's going to be this particular rack. So I'm going to start working with the rack to position it properly on the bone plate, and what I'm going to do is the teeth need to be facing the shaft. So to spin this around, probably the easiest way to do it is to go to the top view, I'm going to zoom back in on the part. I'm going to select just this part in the assembly and then grab the free rotation tool. Selecting just that part, I'm going to move my cursor so that it's just rotating in one, di one direction and then be able to spin this part around so it's a close relationship to where I want it to be. Right click, hit OK. And now I'm going to turn my view back to my isometric so I can start working with this assembly again. And as the parts are pretty well spread out, it does get to be a little tricky spinning this thing around. But it'll get better as we get the parts closer and closer together. So now it's closer to the correct orientation, and I can now start setting up relationships between the two plates. So I'll grab my constraint tool, and I'm going to again set up a, let's do a flush constraint. And I'm going to select the face of what is the teeth or the rack here, and I'm going to select the face of these teeth so that we can set up that relationship. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I want to turn and see that this is actually set up properly. And I can see that now this will slide up and down in the correct position that I want this to be in. I can see how it's sliding up and down here now. So with that set up, I can take this back to a uh, isometric view. And I can start bringing this over and positioning it on top of the plate here. Again, constraint tool. And I'm going to go ahead and use a mate. Because what I'd like to do now is set up so that the faces here are going to be uh, aligned. So I'm going to grab this edge. I'm going to grab the bottom edge of this part. Because the bottom edge of this part is actually then going to touch the bottom edge of this part. By doing that, really brings it over and positions it properly uh, where I need it to be and hit apply. Now, the only thing about this is if I move it, it should rotate around that particular point. So that's not really what I need either, and it won't move away. So I will end up needing to delete that particular relationship after I get things positioned. So mates can be utilized and constraints can be utilized to position and then delete them later. So I'll remember where that mate is. That's mate number four on the rack. So I'm going to go ahead now and use my constraint tool. And this time I'm going to try a angle constraint because I want to really have a parallel relationship between this part and this part. When I do that, setting up that zero degree angle, that's going to keep these two parallel, and I hit apply and cancel. I'm going to go right ahead now, and I want to delete that mate 4 that I used to position. I'm going to select the mate 4 from my browser underneath of my rack 
uh, part six, right click and then hit delete. Now, what that should give me is movement uh, for this part, and that movement will always stay parallel and it should stay flush. So if I turn and look at my part, I can see what I've constrained here so far. And this part should be able to move up and down, but it's not going to then move away in this direction. Now, it will also stay parallel uh, in other directions. So I'm going to be able to now to probably or stay parallel in this particular uh, direction as well. So if I turn and look at this from the front, I want to see what kind of relationship I have. So it's parallel, but it's not flush to anything. Okay, so what I need to do is just start continuing uh, adding some constraints to keep this in a particular uh, selected area that I want. Okay, so we can now constrain the rack so it only moves up and down and not all around here. We're going to set up another constraint. And it's going to be an offset constraint. So we're going to get a mate. It's going to be a flush. And I'm going to make this face flush with this face. And then I'm going to offset it so that it's pushed over so that the rack and the teeth will line up. And that offset constraint is going to be 0.75. And I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And I'm going to turn this thing around and take a look to see just what this thing looks like. So it looks like it can only move up and down in this position. And I'm going to spin it around this way and just see it's going to move up and down in this position only. And as I zoom in, I'm going to see are these teeth going to lock up. Yep, looks like the teeth are going to fall right into position. All right, so now the only way this thing can move is the movement that we have designated, and it is now in position. So what we could do next is we can start thinking about getting the gear and positioning the gear so that the gear teeth are now tangent. Okay, with the rack in position, I'm going to now move the gear closer to my assembly, and I can now start assembling the gear with the rack. I'm going to grab my constraint tool again, and I'm going to go ahead and set up a flush constraint so that the gear is now going to be flush with the face of the uh, rack here because that's the relationship I need. I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up a tangent relationship so that the pitch circle that I can have uh, on my gear here, so that pitch diameter circle and the pitch uh, line on the rack are then going to be tangent to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply there. Now I just want to check the relationship now. The gear should only move up and down on the rack, or the rack should move up and down on the gear, and that should be moving up and down on that uh, tangent line for the pitch diameters. Okay, So we got that set up, and that's uh, ready to move on to the next part. So now we got to start looking at the next part, which is going to be the, uh, I think it's part number four. So we're going to now take uh, the frame, which is part four, and we're going to do an insert constraint on the frame so that the frame can be attached to the top of the shaft. So I'm going to grab the frame using an insert constraint. I'm going to grab the top of the shaft and then I'm going to then offset that particular feature so that that comes down into a better position. And I'm just going to set this up. Well, it looks like two inches will probably be a nice position for that. So I'll go ahead and hit apply. Cancel. And now I got to see what kind of relationship I have with this. And you can see I can move this around. So I'm going to go ahead and I need to set this up so that it will not move back and forth and it's going to stay parallel. So I'm going to use a angle constraint. I'm going to grab my angle constraint tool, the solution of angle. I'm going to then constrain, well, not the center of that. Again, do this again. So angle constraint solution, this face with, let's say, the side of this, and that will be a zero constraint. And then hit apply and cancel. Now this will not move back and forth. Now I'm ready to start looking at the constraints necessary to start positioning this gear in the rack and the hole so that we can actually start creating movement. Now this can happen in a few different ways and I'm going to probably want to stop and start up a part two video for that because this can be fairly in-depth. So look for the uh, movement constraints in part two.